we did it. We got all the batteries moved out. Actually, they got all the batteries moved out. Well, I ripped out all the electrical and started. I took all the pipes out, gone to the ceiling, uh, pulled all the electrical out. For right now, we were gonna like leave the front core batteries in, but we decided to pull them all out. And we just jumped from the, the bypass was in previously in the uh, Xantrix panel. So for right now, what I did is I just hardwired out of the generator panel, looped up around, went into the main electrical panel. I just did a full bypass. Um, super legit with what we have. It's all strapped up. It's only gonna be me working in here. But, so phase one is done. All of the batteries are removed. Uh, now what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna put in some filler boards on this side and on this side to bring the wall out to one and a half inch, um, or actually it's five eighths, and then we're gonna run three quarter inch plywood horizontally, and that's gonna give us a lot of depth. You know, we're gonna have uh, almost an inch and a half, you know, going through there, uh, inch and a quarter to screw to, um, so that we can really place everything where we want to without necessarily having to worry about hitting studs. Um, this is gonna get sleeved with EMT down into the flexor, excuse me, into the Flexware 1000, and we're gonna actually add the GFI breakers out of the GSLC, um, which you can see that it comes uh, in there with the breaker for the PV. But I, I got stuff to crimp on and extend those wires, but I thought, well, this is the primary point where it actually enters anyways. So we'll relocate the GFI breakers in the Flexware 1000 for our battery combiner, and then it'll just kind of protect off that and go directly into the PV and then out into the, uh, the distribution for the shunts for the Flexware 1000. So pretty good progress for right now. Um, it was quite a chore using an engine hoist, a tractor. We had our friend Bob come over. If actually, if you go back to one of my old videos, I'll put uh, Bob, we did a, a repair on his system and I'll put a, a video of that on there too. But you can see the XIG and B batteries are all stacked up. Um, those are about 700 and something pounds a row. So you can see we have quite a bit of weight right there and they're all ready to go off to be uh, to be cored out or to be recycled. And you can hear the generator off running out in the back. So, all right, we're gonna get back to it and uh, work a late night tonight now that we got the generator in and the house up and running, uh, lights going, fridge on, kick on some music and go for, uh, go for project late night. <laughs> Holy smokes, that was a brutal day. 12 hours in and we got quite a bit done. Um, the old people killed it moving the batteries and uh, it, well, I, I can't call them older people. I don't know what you call them. I would just say um, age experienced. I'm not really too sure, but they did great. They moved the batteries while I tore out all the old electrical, the PV, uh, feed, for the or the PV feed for the charge controllers, um, ripped out all the old system and then everybody left and I just dropped on some music, had a little caffeine and kicked into this next phase. Let's check it out. All right, so I'll probably get a little more progress in tonight after we eat dinner. Uh, we're gonna have some tri-tip and just relax for a little bit. But um, I put up, I had to scab in some small pieces on the side, like a six inch piece and a 34 inch piece over here um, so that I could flatten out the wall. And then I, those pieces went vertically. I went, wound up going horizontally with the other pieces and then segmented those all in. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to make this wall strong because I didn't know if I was actually gonna be able to hit studs going on this. I did wind up getting in the centers of them, but to really anchor some of the stuff that's off center and the inverter weighs quite a bit and with an inch and a quarter of distance, man, I can do anything I wanna do for placement wise. So, so far everything's working good. We're gonna have our GSLC and our Radian, our Flexware 1000, this will go up six inches so that everything's pretty close to even across the top and uh, we're pretty much set to go. Rocking the lithium iron batteries, baby. <laughs> all right, this is like our standard thing. Another long day. It's four o'clock. I finally got all of the uh, new infrastructure done. Tom's opening up the batteries right now and we're getting ready to start hanging them so that we can come up with a list of stuff that we need because it's Good Friday and the wholesale house was closed. So we got to run back into town. I couldn't have somebody grab it for me, but let me show you what we got. All right, so we have all of the new infrastructure done. Um, we added the uh, the conduits right here for the generator input, the inverter output, and then one for the communication. Um, got everything up in the attic, and then we had to reconnect it and feed down into these panels. That all went pretty smooth. Um, and then we also took, and uh, remember before, the, 
the solar feed, it went back up behind this wall, up and over and then dropped back down. But I decided on this one, since we're just going from, we're gonna extend this feed with the GFI breaker right here, because this is the best point to kind of tap into it. It's gonna feed down off the GFI breaker into the charge controllers and then go out of the charge controllers and then it'll go back up and it'll land in the GSLC, which is not my standard thing, but all the shunts are in here um, for all the monitoring for the flex net. So some of this is gonna, that, that breaker right there is gonna get relocated. These ones will stay right in here. And then I'm actually gonna add a 100 amp breaker for the battery charger and then another breaker for the hydro. Cause I'm probably gonna wind up putting the Midnight Kid in for the hydro we just have a i don't know a small hydro this was kind of the what we came up with it's been in now for like probably i don't know how long has the hydro been in eight years uh, about 10 years 10 years so it's been in for quite a while so yep that's kind of our plan we're going to uh go at the batteries next we got them all super secured um i have the conduits made right here but i'm going to actually put the batteries in without them there because it's complex enough as it is um, the way that we get the batteries in is we have a hydraulic cart and we actually put the first battery on top of this crate to lift it up high enough to get the battery to clear up in there. And they actually go in pretty easily. So if you're putting in these types of batteries, one of those carts from, uh, from Harbor Freight is highly, no, it's a necessity. It's a 200 pound battery. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we have three days into going at this and uh, this was quite a bit of work. Uh, Tom didn't quite realize the full extent of what it was we were getting ready to do. Did you, Tom? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> so he saw the pictures, but realized once we got uh, pretty deep into it that this was actually quite a bit of work. It's a whole, effectively, it's it's a whole new off-grid system, but everything went pretty smooth. So kind of going from left to right, uh, we wound up refeeding all of the wires for the for the main panel. Um, I, I had to feed them because they were three feet short of reaching and now that I've, you know, I'm a little more seasoned, I really prefer um, everything being a phase. Um, so we have new wires for our main panel, new wires. This is the well sub panel, which I used to have kind of like a feeder thing as like a bypass when we first started, but now we're going to just totally bail on that. It's just going to be a well control panel. Um, so the, the, the feed for the generator is coming down, looping through. Now, this is our generator main input panel, which we actually right now, since we removed all the mechanical bypass from what was up here before, what we did is we just took and simply bridged the generator panel into the input of the main panel to get us power for these, for these few days, which it really has been working pretty well. We've been kind of mixing between running the Kohler 14KW generator and then a Honda EU to keep the freezers charged up. And they're gonna have to do that. Unfortunately, tomorrow's Easter, so we're gonna have to do that for a couple more days. Um, but, you know, upgrading for off grid and doing it nicely is a little bit of a challenge. So, basically, what we have is we have a comm cable, we have our um, generator input, and our AC output. I made this big enough so that if we need to add another inverter, we can actually scoot everything over. We have room for expansion, we have room for not not just one, but we actually can add two more batteries below if we need to. That's why I kind of held everything a little bit tall. And uh, we've got all of the primary wiring pretty much in place. The battery cables, they're all done. Um, the solar, I had to take, like I was talking before, um, the solar feed is coming in from the pole mount. So when I do a final video, we'll go over all that. So the solar's coming in, I need to extend it. So I put the main PV breakers in the Flexware 1000 and then they'll go over, come into the charge controllers, go out of the charge controllers, and they'll actually terminate in the GSLC. And the reason they're gonna terminate in there is we have the Flexware, or I'm sorry, the FlexNet, that's actually gonna do all the column counting for charging the batteries and making sure it's going in. So we're gonna have the solar. Um, we're also gonna have the feed for the hydro that it can count so we can really tally how much the hydro actually subsidized power. And then we can actually also land the secondary battery charger in with the inverter. So it can really t you know calculate how much power is going into the batteries. So one of the other questions that I had also was about separating AC and DC and having that the solar is gonna be going back and forth through here. This is actually a gutter divider. And when this is all done, it'll be tidier. Just got this all kind of ran right before I'm getting ready to leave and head home for the night. So um, the gutter divider isolates the two and all the DC will actually come up and wrap around and then ultimately be in a box that has AC and DC super close to each other. So that's kind of an overview of this off-grid upgrade. And again, this was the first system that I ever built 
uh, 13 years ago. So it's kind of fun to come back and revisit and modify and clean it all up. So have a great Easter weekend and we will see you guys again next week. <laughs>